Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. So we are here because on Friday, uh, I learned that I was suddenly going to have 40 extra hours a week to kill. Hi, Steinbeck. So in an effort to keep myself waking up on time, At least once a week, hopefully more. I'll try to join you here from my couch with my pup and a cup of coffee and we'll talk about what's going on in the photography industry. Yes, we will. So for today, I found an interesting article yesterday on f-stoppers. There's a link to it in the video description if you'd like to read it that I thought was worth mentioning. And if I can actually remember what my phone's password is, I'll even tell you the, the title of it so that I don't get it wrong. Okay. It was called Film Photography is at a Crossroads Headed for Extinction, colon, What It Would Take to Turn It Around and Why It Won't Happen by James Madison. So um, it's a brief article. It's uh, 10, 12 minute read, give or take some above average to, to, to good photography in it if you're interested in seeing some work. I don't know if he took the photos himself or not. I would assume so. And if so, there's some, some decent work in there. The article kind of goes through why film photography is headed for extinction. That's, that's the crux of the piece. And the point that, uh, that James makes in this is a good one that I made a few years, I've been making for a few years off and on, which is basically that film can be produced profitably and there are companies that will find a way to continue producing it, right? That's my take. Um, however, the point that James makes that I agree with him very much on is that no one is making affordable film cameras. There's some expensive luxury items like the F6 and the Leica that he mentions and a few medium formats. I think there's a, a Voigtlander and some others. Um, but the, the days of being able to pick up, he, he cites the uh, F100 and, and Elan 7, but even things like a Maxim 5, which would be a, a step down from those are gone. No one is making those. And the, lo the low priced cameras that are being made, like some of the lo-fi cameras, are way overpriced for what they are, quite frankly. So I've been running into, for, it, for those of you who don't know, I have a, an online camera store, so I get a lot of cameras. That's this YouTube channel does not simply exist because I have an amazing camera collection, by the way. It exists because I run a camera store and I take video uh, cameras before they go out the door and then make video manuals about them so that people can learn how to use them. That's where all of the cameras come from, by the way. And um, so at any rate, uh, when I buy cameras, buying the majority of them sight unseen and untested. And so, as you can imagine, I have a significant portion of the incoming that simply don't work and need to have a repair. So I have a, a good network of repairmen who repair cameras for me so that they can be sold as functional. And every one of them has started to struggle with finding replacement parts for some camera models. So, um, for instance, I just sent my Minolta XK off to be repaired because I need to f have it, it broke and I need to have it fixed to finish the videos for it. And the guy I sent it to wasn't 100% sure he could fix it. it. Turns out he can, but parts for that are extremely rare. Okay, fine, that's a weird one-off camera. K1000s, everyone has one of those. Um, the guy I send those to is struggling to find functional meters for them because there are more of them that have failing meters. That's, that's become the weak link in the K1000. The meters are failing faster than the rest of the component, uh, the, the components in the camera. So the, the ME Super, 
the AE1 and the AE1 program, these three all have the same weak spot, which is the electronics, which are failing left and right on some of these cameras. I, I am seeing more AE and AE, uh, AE1 and AE1 program cameras this year with bad flexes in them than I have in the last three years combined. Um, it's, it's a dramatic uptick in how quickly the electronics in that, those two models of camera are just failing. So, so the point that, um, that's made in the article is that there's go the, the number of working cameras is doing this, right? And there's going to come a point, there's a threshold somewhere, I couldn't tell you exactly where it is, where when the number of working cameras dips below that, there will no longer be enough working cameras or enough people using working cameras to maintain the film industry, at which point those companies will go out of business and there will be no more film. It won't happen all at once. Certainly, some company will go out of business before the others do, and so on and so forth. Um, the, the way to rectify that would be for someone to come in and say, hey, we're going to make a mid-priced camera. And that wouldn't be impossible to do. There are some hurdles to that, however. So, so let's look at a hypothetical situation where an existing manufacturer or a startup said, we're going to make a meterless, all mechanical, 35 millimeter film SLR with interchangeable lenses. Right. Great plan. It, it would be wonderful and um, eminently doable to manufacture, except for the shutter. And see, here's, here's the main problem. This is the problem across all formats of photography, regardless of what type of camera. It's the shutter. You can grab a K1000 with a dead meter and still use it, right? You can use a Sunny 16 rule or a light meter in your smartphone or a handheld meter, whatever, that's fine. And it will still function. But there were not a lot of cameras being made after that that used mechanical shutters. They switched over to electronic. So if you're going to get a new shutter, which is doable if you were to use a, a DSLR shutter, theoretically, let's say that's possible. I don't know if it is. It would have to be battery powered. Okay, so now we're, that takes away the viability of an all mechanical option, meaning it's going to have to have software and electronics. It's going to be much more expensive to manufacture, much harder to develop from the start. Right, so that's an issue. All right, well, what about leaf shutters? Who's making leaf shutters? No one. Copal has stopped making leaf shutters, and I believe Seiko has as well. I, I don't know if there's somebody still making them. F I forget if one of the Leicas has leaf shutters. I'll admit to not being a Leica expert. Um, but um, at any rate, to the best of my knowledge, no one's making leaf shutters, just like to the best of my knowledge, no one's making all mechanical shutters. So. That's probably not a viable option. Has huge ramifications, by the way, for large format. We'll get there in a second. So, so let's say somebody, in, in camera manufacturers throughout the years didn't make their own shutters. If you go and you buy a, a camera from name a brand from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they didn't have 100% of the, of the process in-house. There may have been a time that they did early on, and some manufacturers might have. But by the time automation really came in to mass produce quality cameras, there were companies like Copal and Seiko that were making shutters that were then used in the SLRs that we know. So with neither of those companies making mechanical shutters, and with the likelihood of all of the tooling that was used to make mechanical shutters being long gone, the odds of being able to reproduce them now is slim. So it brings us back to electronic shutters and how that would have to be the option, a very expensive option. So 
the parts that are available would necessitate that if a camera is going to be a, if a film camera a new film camera were, were a budget option it would have to be heavily plastic like a Cosina C1 type camera and it would still be expensive more expensive than many digitals I, I suspect without having run the numbers that to get to a three to five hundred dollar price range for a film SLR would be very near impossible without each one of those SLRs walking out the door at a loss. Um, that's a significant problem for the industry. What, well, okay, so what if 35 millimeter goes away and you just have 120 and large format? Those could theoretically be produced for about the same cost and would give users more bang for their buck. Well, the issue with medium formats, the same as with 35. Getting to an, a, a profitable production is gonna be very hard. Hold on, Steinbeck, I gotta get my coffee. Good pop. Yeah, I know, I know, I made you move your head. I'm sorry, I woke you up. With large format, we're into the Copal and Seiko shutter issues in that the companies that used to make shutters for those don't anymore. And those shutters are not high. They can last for a long time, but they're not taking 500 photos a day. If they did, they'd fail. Actually, just the other day, I had a, a um, Graflex shutter I was testing out. Um, and third, third time I fired it, <laughs> The leaves caught and one of the leaves tore. So and there's no, there's no uh, affordable repair for things like that. That shutter manages to still work and be light tight, but if, it had, if that leaf had torn in any other way, it wouldn't and that shutter would just be done. So, so the, the real issue for the long-term sustainability of film is the aging out of components and the ultimate point that we will reach where the old, com old existing cameras today are no longer viable and there aren't enough film cameras to support the film industry. Well, okay, what about pinhole cameras? You can make them yourself, right? I mean, heck, I have a solar camera that I made out of an Illy coffee can on my patio railing right now doing a one year exposure. You can make pinholes out of coffee cans, boxes. I have uh, cigar boxes I've turned into pinhole cameras, things like that. And that's true, but not a big sector of photography and also not high enough resolution to really be the type of photography that most people would be drawn to and uh, also very difficult to use, long exposures and things like that. So I think this is the part of the video where I should have a solution for you. And unfortunately, I don't. Do I think that there is no solution? No, there, I, I suspect there is. I probably just don't have it this early on a Wednesday morning in May. Uh, where there is money to be made, someone will find a way to make that money. If there is enough demand for a mid-price film camera, someone will find a way to make it and do so even if it's at a a small profit enough to make a little money. We've seen some Kickstarter efforts at this. I submit they're all going to be vaporware because it is they're, they're all way more ambitious than they should be. And uh, it's like people want to jump straight into an Olympic sized pool before learning how to tread water. Realistically, if there is going to be success in introducing a mid-priced SLR. It will probably end up coming from an established company. 
and it will probably end up using older technology, which would be honestly just fine. Because there's a lot that can be done with a good lens and older camera technology, which is why old M42 cameras without a meter can still take wonderful photos because there's plenty of wonderful M42 lenses. So were it me, were I working at a photography company and had my, were my boss to come to me and say, you need to figure out a way for us to get a mid-priced film SLR on the market in the three to $500 range, uh, I would start by looking at an M42 mount camera. I'd start by trying to find a way to get all mechanical shutters, even if that meant looking at the shutters that were made in the 50s, the early 50s, early to mid 50s, re-engineering from there and making something very simple. If you look at camera, if you look at the Pentax K line, because this is a perfect example for this, because they used uh, mechanical shutters for so long from the, from the K, actually from the Asahi flexes, but starting with the K, up through the K1000 when it e exited production in the 90s, you know, that's, that's a 40 year span of mechanical shutters. And over that time, the shutter design evolved. The, the shutters in the K1000 are way more advanced than they are in the K from 1957, but they both still have a 1 1,000th of a second maximum speed. The K shutter is su substantially simpler uh, to manufacture and, as and assemble than the more advanced shutters that came after it. So were I to design a mid-priced film SLR, my first start would be looking at a, a mid to late 50s SLR, taking it apart, understanding how the shutter was built, and then figuring out a way to produce that in-house, whether it's through 3D printing with metal, custom ordering parts using a laser cutter to cut sheet metal into the pieces that are needed, something like that. Uh, the curtain can be had readily, and that could be also laser cut to the proper dimensions reliably and quickly. And then at, a, at that point, it's just a matter of finding the workforce to assemble these things and the rest of the gears and components. And assembled in a country where labor laws are fuzzy might make it possible to assemble those in a way that would make them profitable at a three to five hundred dollar price point. So that's going to be, in all probability, the future of film photography. Looking backwards at what was done 60, 70 years ago, understanding how that was done. And the reason that that's a perfect time to look backwards to is because that was done before computers. That stuff was all designed by hand, which means it would be very easy to replicate today much, much simpler than the later complex cameras. So looking at those older designs, replicating them, and then figuring out a way to make them profitably. And that could be metal or plastic gearing inside of a plastic housing. Distinct possibility that would be the trade-off that's required. So um, at any rate, that's what I'm thinking about today in terms of the future of the photographic industry. And that's really what we had to cover today for cameras and coffee. Some rambling, fairly unorganized thoughts about the future of film photography. Um, so I'll tell you what, this is going to be an evolving series that will last, well, at least as long as I'm looking for another job, depending on whatever job I end up getting longer. And uh, so if you have any ideas for these one to, one to two time a week videos, things you'd like to see discussed, definitely let me know. I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts and more than happy to discuss these things with you. If you have any ideas about where you think the future of film photography is headed, definitely please let me know. And uh, have a good Wednesday, everybody. Lovely week. 
Hope that you enjoy. Uh, hope you enjoy your coffee and your cameras. Hey Steinbeck, I gotta get up. It's time to turn off the camera, pup.